Innovation, imagination, wonder. These are just some of the words used to describe Dr. Harvey Passes. Dr. Passes explores interesting people and ideas that will stimulate you. He questions the people who develop, create, and employ novel concepts in business and everyday lives. He especially loves to speak with successful people. How did they do it? How can you do it too? So let's join Dr. Harvey Passes in his quest of wonder and curiosity as we watch Dr. Harvey Passes Presents. I had a conversation with an individual who impressed me. I'm always speaking to people. I'm always wanting to learn. I can't help it. I'm just a curious kind of guy. And I met this individual who is the president of an organization that I belong to. And I got into learning about what he does, and I had heard a little bit about this, but I didn't know much about it. And he started talking some more and some more, and I was really fascinated by it. And I said, would you like to have this conversation on television? And he said, absolutely. So I brought him down here, Mr. Joe Devino. Joe, hey, Doc, it how are is you? wonderful to have you down here. Thanks for Before having me. Before I tell the folks at home a little bit about you, and what you're doing here, but Divino means of the wine, from the wine. Sure does. So your, your parents had some wine one night, and you, you anyway. And then I came, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. I like that. That's a, Considering a lot of the shows we do here on uh, food and wine, that's good. I should change my last name. Okay, let me tell the folks at home a little bit about what you do. This gentleman was talking to me about a topic that I found fascinating. I didn't know whether it was a good thing, a bad thing, or a, or a neutral thing what to do, but it was interesting. And we're going to learn about it. It's called reverse mortgages. What is a reverse mortgage? Well, we're going to ask Joe so he can explain it to us. Joe, what is a reverse mortgage? Does well, this mean that I owe you money, you owe me money? No, it's uh, the best way to explain it for people who don't know it very well. Yeah. It's very similar to a refinance. It has, it has subtle differences, but if you were to take a refinance of your home, mm -hmm. Pull out, let's just say, a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You put it in the bank, or you do it for some home repair. Go or gambling, buy yeah, wine, whatever right. floats your boat. Yeah. <laughs> um, the end of the, the end of the month, you're going to receive a monthly payment with interest, and you're going to have this monthly payment mm -hmm. in front of you until that loan is paid off 100 mm percent. -hmm. With a reverse mortgage, if you take out a hundred thousand dollars, if you qualify for a hundred thousand dollars, you could take it three different ways. You could take it by either a lump sum, so you could take the hundred thousand, put it in your bank. You could take it in the form of a credit line, draw down upon it whenever you'd like. Or you could take it in monthly payments. What does that mean? Well, that means if, uh, depending on your age, mm. if you take $100,000, that might equate to about $500 a month. It, it varies if you're younger right. or older. Uh, you'll receive this $500 every single month for the rest of your life as long as this house remains your primary residence. So uh, you can't uh, outlive the equity in the home. It's, uh, it's a wonderful way to uh, reverse the money that's coming in because instead of having to pay money for the hundred thousand dollars you're now receiving you know monthly payments I got so many questions to ask huh. you where to begin my gosh as you're talking you're, you're explaining it I'm saying but and what if and, and all this other kind of stuff okay so I'm assuming that most people who would be interested in doing this are senior citizens true um, let's, let's go down back backtrack a second where <clears throat> the age to qualify is 62 years old mm -hmm. so if you're under the age of 62 you don't even qualify is this uh, is this a, a law? Is this a state law, a federal law, or no, it's just it's a company law? No, it's the bank department. Uh, it's a, it's a bank that came up with uh, the reverse reverse mortgage came out years and years ago. Right. But uh, they weren't too successful. As a matter of fact, over the last three years, they've been becoming very popular. Um, so the banking regulations and departments came in and said, okay, the average age now for a reverse mortgage is at the age of 62. So if you're a husband and wife, and if you're going for a reverse mortgage, if the husband is 70 and the wife is 61, you don't qualify. Both borrowers have to be minimum age of 62. What are the greatest obstacles in an individual to, in doing this? The, the biggest problem that I see all the time, and it's, it's almost sad to say, it's the, the children of the parents. Um, they look at a reverse mortgage as uh, their inheritance, their birthright. Mm -hmm. And if their parents take a reverse mortgage, they're taking equity out of their home that their children assume to be theirs you know, going forward. And they're not going to get it. Yeah, they're not. It's, it's a shame. They're, they're willing to, you know, some cases deprive their family of a better better living, better right. style of living than, you know, just so they could have money later but on. But it makes sense because it's it's basically a piece of equity. Sure. And, you, and you're taking the equity and you're liquidating it. This is true. While you're still living in it. Absolutely. So 
there shouldn't be anything afterwards. Well, what happens if senior citizen does this, someone 70 years old does this, for argument's sake, and they start getting the payments. They get $500, okay, in, in that first month, let's say. They sure. opt for that. Absolutely. And then they die after the first month. Okay. Uh, if it's a single person, if there's only one person on the deed, the house uh, will be left to their children or whoever they decide to leave the house to. And they get the money? Uh, well, what would happen is the children now have to refinance out of the reverse mortgage, pay back the money that was originally taken out, Plus the interest. 500 bucks. Well, no, because what happens is uh, you could receive the payment three different ways. You could receive $500 a month for the rest of your life. Right. You could get a $100,000 credit line or a lump sum of $100,000. $100, but what if they took the $500 a month, let's say, and they only got one $500 check, and then they dropped dead? What no, happens? No, no, no. Then you only pay back what you use. The $500. That's all. Plus, the, let's just say, one month of uh, the interest. Okay. That you accrue. Okay. Okay. So then that makes sense. And then who 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 gets the house? That goes back to yeah. It goes back. It goes back to the, the estate. Children. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. But but the key factor here is um, when the parents are going for a reverse mortgage. Right. Uh, the children have to look at this from the angle of saying, okay, my my family is going to have a better way of living. Um, when you take a reverse mortgage, you do not make any monthly payments back. By a reverse mortgage, if you take a hundred thousand dollars out, mm -hmm. you do not pay this back. Uh, the money is right, your, your equity. Account. Right, but but even if you take a refinance, if you take $100,000, and you have to pay month to month, every month until that's repaid. With a reverse mortgage, the money gets tacked onto the back end. So no monthly payments until you either sell the house or unfortunately pass on. Right, 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 right. Can, can a senior citizen outlive the equity in the mortgage? No, that, and that's, see, that's a beautiful part of uh, the reverse mortgage as well because... They make sure that you drop dead early. No, yeah. I'm <laughs> if, uh, let's just say, the, your home is worth $300,000 and uh, you qualify for $200,000. Okay. You receive the check for $200,000, you put it in the bank, you go gambling, you go on vacation, you do right. whatever, whatever floats right. your boat. Um, and then 20 years down the road, you're still alive. Uh, you know, the bank's going to start scratching the head because everything's done on the mortality table. They lend hey, money. Hey, this guy's still upon. around here. Wait yeah. a minute. We want to sell the house and get the money back. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, they base this money on you Actuarial living to studies. a certain... Yeah, absolutely. So what happens if you live beyond it? Um, say that again. I'm sorry. What happens if you live beyond that? You well, what happens is if, let's just say, 20 years down the road, your house is worth because homes go up in value. You have dips here and there. But let's say the house is worth a million dollars in 20 years. Right. It was 300000 Right. Three million. Right. You say, well, how does this make sense? Because, you know, now there's a problem here. I owe more than uh, than I actually took back in. Uh, that's too bad for the bank. The bank takes that loss. So uh, uh. the debt does not carry over to the children. It, uh, they assume the loss. And it's uh, actually part of some closing costs. Now, what if you have a mortgage on the house? See, this is the beautiful thing. Um, if, you, if you qualify for the reverse mortgage, assuming you have, let's just say, you took a 30-year fixed and... You have now yeah, hundred thousand left remaining. over on the mortgage, right? Okay. And I'm if, sixty-three. Okay, so <coughs> sixty-three. Say you, argument sake, you qualify for two hundred thousand. You get that money. That first mortgage is paid off. So now you no longer have a mortgage, and now you receive another hundred thousand dollars. And any one of those three ways, you can take a lump sum. Stop. Or, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You lost me. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go, go, start again. If if the house is worth three hundred thousand dollars. Yes. And I ask for a hundred thousand. Right. And um, and I have 200000 left over. Let's say I have 100000 on on my first um, mortgage that's left over. Yes. And I'm asking you for 100000 Yes. What happens to that first? That for 100000 goes into my pocket well, that, the, I got from you, that I got from the company. That's all, it's all a part of qualifying. Explain. So if you owe $100,000 and you only qualify for $100,000, the only thing that will happen here, that money has to pay off the first mortgage. Oh, so... Well, what happened is... All you did was just give it to another company. All you did was eliminate your mortgage payment, your monthly mortgage payment. So you no longer have a monthly mortgage payment. Okay. So if your payment was $1,800 a month because you took a 30-year fix, right. you take this, $100,000, right. kind right. of take it from Peter right. to pay Paul, right. but now Done. next month there's no more mortgage payment. Right, so okay. So you just, in a way, you've just made $1,800 a year per right. month. Right, right, right. But now if you if you qualify for $200,000, but, no 200, equity, 000, right. but you know, if you qualify for more, which most people do, now you could receive monthly payments, lump sum credit lines, 
your mortgage is gone, and now you're having more money to uh, to play with on a month to month basis. So as time goes by and the how on the home and pr increases in value, say it doubles, sure, you can't go back and revisit it and uh, and and reap anything from that equity. It's the bank no. that enjoys the equity. No, no, no. It's increase. always your home. You always own the home. You still own that. You, still you own never home. don't own the home. So. You wait, let's just say, argument's sake, ten years down the road, like you were saying, you want to revisit the equity in the house. You just have to, you have to refinance out of that and do it again. It's all based upon. See, reverse mortgages are based on the uh, in a, per county mm -hmm. uh, FHA loan limits, and in the five boroughs, Long Island, Nassau, Suffolk, and Westchester, the loan limit's about three hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars. So, if your home is worth seven hundred thousand, they're only going to qualify you still under three hundred and sixty-three. So, but in due time, the loan limits go up. So in ten, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you'll have more of an FHA limit where you could pull money from. I see. So you'll always, then you'll always be able to use that equity. Absolutely. To keep so tapping yours. right, right. It's right. If you decide to sell the house, that's when the loan becomes payable. So you pay back the, loan, the money that they gave you plus the interest and take the remaining equity and you know, move down to, do, to do Florida, go vacation some more, rent. Very, very interesting. And the only one who really misses out on this is then when you die. And you die... The bar, the uh, bank gets the house. No, the house is left to if if you have children. In many cases, the home will be left to them. So now the only thing the children have to do because there's a reverse mortgage on this house, they have to refinance out of it. They refinance with a standard tr conventional type of mortgage. They pay off all the debt that right. was incurred uh, from from the parents, and now they keep the house, or they could sell it. They don't have to you know move into the home. They could sell the house and still have all the benefits from. Uh, from the remaining equity. So when the borrower dies, you're saying um, who gets the house, whoever was deeded the house? Sure. You want to leave the house to your children? It's, it's their home. They just have to get out of that mortgage. So you see, that's the thing that was, uh, that, that was confusing to me and other people. Was I was always under the impression that when you take a reverse mortgage, that they get the house. They don't get the house. They've got first lien on the house. That's first and only. First and only right, lien on that's the house. Well, that's why you have that's to pay the major difference here. That's correct. It's not that you're willing the house to them. No, no, it's your home. You keep the home. It's your house. No one's taking that from you. So they have that house as the first, as the only lien up to that amount of money that was taken out of the equity of the home. That's correct. I see. That's very interesting. It's so great it, program. It's very, very similar to uh, to refinancing, except you still own the house. Uh, and the other difference is you don't have to pay to live there. You get paid to live in your home. That that's exactly right. So if you're if you're a senior citizen and you're on a fixed income, uh, and you want to, you know, perhaps spoil your grandkids, put college money away for your grandkids, um, just enjoy life. You know, enjoy your golden years. What it's supposed to be about. Hmm. Uh, you take this mortgage. You don't have to make any monthly payments, mm -hmm. and you live a better quality life. Wow, it's it's v very interesting. What about if you have two homes or three homes? It can only be your primary residence? You are only allowed to uh, take a reverse mortgage on your primary residence, and you must live in that home six months out of the year. Mm. So uh, there have been people that tried to take a reverse mortgage on investment homes and so forth, but this is a contract that you're signing. Uh, if the bank and department finds out about it, it kind of ends the contract and... You know, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, you're in trouble. Now, you committed bank fraud, so it's... Uh, no, no, then that becomes <laughs> a federal problem. Right. And that's, that's, a whole, that's a whole other problem. Again, what was the, the most amount of money? Is that a state thing? It's done by county to county. Oh, you said that earlier. County yes. to county. Right. Uh, wh why? Because each county has a different value of homes? Yeah, because it's an FHA loan. So what they do is they value of the homes in uh, the Northeast more than they would somewhere in the Midwest. So uh, the FHA loan limit in Iowa... Might be 115,000. The maximum it could be is 363,000, which anywhere, know, anywhere, or just in, no, in, no, in, anywhere, in, in, uh, anywhere, yeah, anywhere. Also, and New York is the highest. New York's the highest, right? Isn't that there's really a lot of there's a lot of counties and other states that also have 363,000, but you know you can't go any higher yet. Now you said New York. You mean New York County or New York State? Um, the five boroughs, uh, Nassau uh, County. Nassau's got to be in there. Though. Oh, it's in there. Nassau, uh, Suffolk, and Westchester. So why is there a black eye when people think about it, a negative thought yeah. about reverse mortgages? Because when, when I discussed this with you originally, we spoke about this, I just remember thinking to myself that, you know, this is, this is something, I, I don't want to say shady or negative. Have you heard that? Yes. Why? Yeah, why? 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 Why is because this? Because when reverse, when reverse mortgages first came out, um, Senior citizens were getting tricked. They were they were getting oh. some. There was fraud against them. 
uh, a new program. More, many people didn't know what it was or how to sell it. Uh, they left out uh, the closing costs, how much it would be. People are expecting oh. X amount of dollars. They get far less than what they're told because, and it doesn't happen all the time, but it happened enough where the government stepped in and they revisited the entire policy on how they go about granting these loans. And now they came up with uh, new provisions and they say, okay, in order for anybody now to take a reverse mortgage, you have to get counseled by a government approved agency. Oh. So now counseling has to happen. Uh, they tell you the good and the bad. They tell you uh, sometimes even try to talk you out of it. And it's a good thing because people need to know what they're getting involved with. Yes. Yeah. So that's why the black guy's been out there. And a lot of professionals like CPAs and, and attorneys, they remember the bad time. They remember something was bad and uh, they're going to keep saying don't do they're it. They're going to say do don't do it. I advise right. against it. Yeah, but every time I speak to a CPA and an attorney, I tell them all about the new uh, procedures and so forth. I try to reopen their eyes and to come back where, right. you know, where it's a good thing. And, and what and do they, they say? See it. They, sometimes they see it. Sometimes uh, they're a little stubborn and they don't want to see it. But hmm. the reverse mortgage is a great, great program for the right people. Not so great for the wrong people. Why would someone not want to do a reverse mortgage? Well, I mean, so, you, you just said you, you, you led me into this right. because you said good for some and it's not good for others. Right. Why? Um, if you're well off, if you've, you, you have plenty of equity, uh, you have investments, you have money in the bank, uh, and you're just living a grand life already where you don't need to use the equity in your home then leave it to on. live a better life. Why, you know, why touch it? Okay. Why, you know, why accrue interest on something else right. if you don't need the money in the first place? Right. That makes sense. But if you think that you could benefit better by having a better quality of life, by enjoying yourself, taking vacations, spoiling your grandkids, all these other things, mm -hmm. that will this monthly figure coming in help your day-to-day -day living? And if mm -hmm. the answer is yes, then, then you should, it's worth looking into. Okay, now, people watching this right now are going, all right, but what are the tax implications here? Right. Okay, let's talk about that. Sure. There I aren't see any. a smile on your face. <laughs> because there aren't any. Ah! You're, you're taking money from your home. You're borrowing from yourself. So you are not. You don't get taxed when you borrow money from yourself. Mm -hmm. So I get that question an awful lot, um, but there's there's no implications whatsoever. So, you know, you get that money in, you use it the way you like. Simple as that. Oh, so there's no, nothing. It's no, a, it, no. It's, it's not it's looked upon as income no. or anything like that. No, it's not. You're just exchanging one thing into something else. Yeah, you're, bar you're borrowing from your own money. So it's, it's money that you already, uh, you know, have in the bank, so to speak. I've heard that the closing costs can be higher. I've heard that too. Okay, then uh, let's say refinancing. Right. Talk about that. Okay. Uh, a bit earlier, we touched base on uh, the bank, why they lend money, and how much they lend to. Uh, and the whole idea is the banks come out and they say, we expect a borrower, a male, to live to argument's sake 88 years of age. A woman maybe to 95. Whatever those numbers are. Mm -hmm. I, I made those up. But uh, whatever those numbers are, that's the way they base the money on. Okay. So they say, okay, we expect by the mortality table saying that a man should live till 88. So we're going to lend money assuming that they will expire when they're supposed to. And those who have the audacity to live a little bit longer, mm -hmm. they reap all the rewards because they're now they're living into the past the equity in their home. So they start they, so they're getting they're gravy. better. They're getting yeah, gravy. They want to live just despite the bank. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's, it's a great thing. Um, but closing costs are higher because of that. Uh, Every reverse mortgage has a two-point rule where they, I'm going to explain that to you. Right. Uh, based on the FHA loan limit, they're going to say, okay, you need two points of that. So if you have a $363,000 loan limit, you're going to pay not 1%, 2%, which is two points, $7,200 additional to your closing costs for those bad people who live longer than they're supposed to. It helps pay Really? Pay for, uh, you know, you those know the house always has the cards, the deck stacked against. Yeah, they you. do. They do. It's amazing. Yeah. <coughs> so, so, <laughs> so you can live long, all right, but you paid for it in a pool. You did, right? <laughs> you paid for it in a pool. And that's that's two points. Happening. Yeah, correct. Right. It's it's. Oh, jeez. It's just the way it is. Uh, but uh, if you're that if you're that senior who's outliving it. You're having a time in your life knowing you're doing it now. On uh, so, how do you pay for those two points by getting two percent less? If well, it's they, well they, they close it into the loan. Right. See, this is this goes back to the the trickery that happened with the black eye. Right. Um, people weren't weren't told this. It was never disclosed. So people turn around, they expect a hundred thousand oh. dollars, which you have closing costs. So let's just say it's fifteen or eighteen thousand. You're going to deduct that from the amount that you're getting. 
as long as people know that, they can decide for themselves. Right. It's a surprise. All right. of a sudden, you go through this whole thing. You're sitting at the table. You got an attorney. You got this, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, hey, finally, and there's an additional 2%. Where'd that come from? Sure. But in, in some cases, maybe the reverse mortgage is only 30000 But let's just say you were counting on that 30000 and remodel your bathroom. Right. Now what happens? Now you're, you're, in, you're you in a bit of a problem now because now you're counting on the money. You needed the money, and it's just not there. How long does it take to go through this from beginning to end? Uh, because people have to get counseled now, um, it's really up to the, the right. borrowers. They, they have to make the first jump. I, I, you know, we're not allowed to take applications until a person is uh, counseled. So you have to set the appointment. I can't make the appointment for you. They got to make the, the this call. This reminds me of before you're Catholic, before you get married, you got to you go see the priest. Sure, the pre cana yeah, pre cana <laughs> exactly, the pre cana Before you sign the dotted line, I right. think. You better you know gotta go to the financial pre cana Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but I would say start to finish. If everything goes smooth, two and a half to three months, because it takes about three weeks to set an appointment. The phone cons you can do a consultation by phone mm -hmm. or in person. Uh, there's a list of agencies on, on the government websites that they have. Oh. You can find that out. What's the first step if somebody wants to do this? The first step is really uh, contacting a broker. And even though the, the family members might be against it because you're talking about their equity, it's a good idea to get the family involved. Uh, what I like to do, and a lot of the brokers like to do as well, is trying to get the whole family, cousins, pets, all in one room at one time and try to explain it the best that we can, as fairly as we can, so everybody could see the, the true picture. And then if they decide to go forward from there, then uh, you make that, that phone call and get counseled. And you listen to a non-biased third-party opinion. Hmm. Is there any way in which you could see that children would be interested in promoting their parents to do this? <clears throat> um, you know, I, I've done a bunch of these in the past, and it seems like it's the biggest milestone getting the children to agree. To agree. It's amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing. Now, even... A lot of times, the children... Not amazing. Uh, it's, I found it to be it, somewhat it's, surprising it's, uh, you know, when, when it happened over and over again. You would think that, and in a lot of these cases, even talking to the children, they're kicking money in on a monthly basis to help their parents. Mm. Get a, do a reverse mortgage. They'll get their own money. You don't have to kick in anymore. You know, it's, it's a win-win. Not to mention, when you, when you do a reverse mortgage, if you have $300,000 worth of equity in your home, 10 years later, because home values go up, you still have $300,000 worth of equity. Right. You start really dipping into that, you know, going forward past the 10 years. So, you know, the way I look at it and the way I try to explain it to everybody is that don't be so fearful your money's here, you know, if that's right. the, uh, the main concern. So let me, let me bring this home. <clears throat> so Mr. Jones goes ahead and he does this, and he's 75, and he does this, and he takes, he's got a home that says it's worth 500000 and he winds up, winds up getting 250 out. Make it easy, $200,000 out. Mm -hmm. And he's been getting checks or he's getting a lump sum. Now he's got, in essence, a note for 200000 on his home. Yes. He drops dead. When the house now is deeded over to uh, little Jimmy Jones and uh, his sister, Jane Jones, mm -hmm. they go, oh, goody, we got the house. But now they got a lien on that house for $200,000. Plus, plus interest. Plus interest. Because the bank. What's the interest on that? Uh, it varies. Uh, there's a few different. You could select. Uh, they have a fixed rate, but it's usually two points higher than the monthly adjustable. Ninety-five percent of the people take the monthly adjustable rate because it hovers just a little bit lower than what the 30-year fixed is. So today, if the 30-year fixed is 6.5 percent, you might be at 6.3 percent. But it, it can adjust, go higher and lower. So they now have this house. They've got a $200,000 debt. They got to pay it back with that interest ta uh, tacked onto it, and that Correct. interest is based upon the, the 200000 or it's based upon time? It's time plus the 200000 So it's How much interest. time? No, it's the same. Well, it depends how long did he have the mortgage for. Did he take this reverse mortgage, and, and did he die a year later? Then it's only one year of interest. If he died 30 years later, it's 30 years of interest. So they've got to now come up with the 200000 plus, uh, say, uh, 10 years worth of 6%, let's say, interest. Right. So that will leave them with uh, the interest will be, will be a killer. Uh, well, you say a killer, but I'll tell you. I mean, it's still, up. It certainly is. Ten years. But, but you're taking this years. money. Remember what you're taking the money for. You know, you're looking at it from the, the child's view. If you look at it from the parent's view, you just gave your, your family ten years of a better life with their own money. It's their money. <laughs> you know, so if you look into their pockets, you could say, sure, you know, we have to pay this back. And, uh, you, know, I want, you know, I want for me and my family. But the whole idea is 
you know, to give your family, your right. parents, a better quality of life. That's it. Yeah, you pay interest, but a regular mortgage, a regular 30-year fix, mm -hmm. you're paying interest the same as way, right. the same way. It's not, you're not paying more or less. You just you have to pay it in the end. No monthly payments. It's all paid at the end. What happens if you got bad credit? Does it matter or not? Uh, in most cases, it does, but a reverse mortgage, it does not matter. You because could you have, got the uh, house. The house is the credit. <laughs> the house, that's it. House you're you're it. sitting on the equity of your home. The bank does not give you 100% of the equity in the house. They give you a, a fraction of the, uh, of the, the that money equity because, you know, based on your on your, your age and how long they anticipate you living for, that's how much they'll give you. Based upon what you're saying, it seems to me then it doesn't even matter what your income is. No, no. You're uh, anybody at any time based upon the criteria of 62 or over, primary residence, and equity in your home. If you ha if you meet these three criteria, you're, you're set in gold. This is this is a uh, Money, more money in the bank. Then you go through this, you get your money, and you do something else with it, but you're still responsible. But this is a question statement. I'm assuming you're still responsible for your taxes. You're responsible for uh, everything that's insurance, every, everything that's involved, so people understand this. It's as if you never even went to the bank to, to get this, this loan. Well, um, you could, if you take the loan, you could have them hold, the, the bank itself, hold back the taxes and insurance. They'll put another pool of money on the side uh, for you. Or you just take it all and remember that you just have to pay your, your taxes like you do anyway. Yeah, like you do every year. Right. That's not going to stop. No, that, stuff everything, you know, stop. That, that'll just go up uh, in, in, you know, in time because everything goes up. Um, but you'll have the money to offset that. Hmm. It's very, very, very interesting. What's, what's the downside here for anybody doing this? Uh, the downside is if you go in blind, if you go in expecting uh, too much, if you if you if you talk to somebody who's unqualified mm -hmm. to direct you, like in other words, I wouldn't go to uh, get advice about my teeth from a foot doctor. I go to the, yeah, to the foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the whole idea is you have the downfall is getting bad advice uh, from the wrong unqualified people. So. I would say 100% of the time, talk to your family, talk mm -hmm. to a professional in the industry. Right. And then, you know, you, you should save yourself of all worries. So the biggest problem is unrealized expectations. Yeah. In other words, uh, if someone's not honest with you to say to you, listen, if they're closing, there's, there's a closing, I assume. Is, is it the right. same terminology? Yeah, same thing, same okay. thing, yes. So, you know, by the way, you at closing, you know, you've got another 2% that's due here, and they're going, wait, nobody told me. And it goes on and on. So one of the biggest obstacles is just not being informed enough, right? Well, if, if you're going to be deceived, then when you show up at the closing, mm -hmm. then this is all going to pop up. There, no hidden, no hidden uh, surprises here. When you show up at the closing, you have an attorney there, representing the bank, right. and they're going to go over the fees with you. And if you're expecting X and you get X minus uh, 10%, right. well, you have a three-day rescission to ah. to bail out of this. Okay, you didn't mention that earlier. No, I didn't. So it's a three-day <laughs> three rescission. Just like a regular refinance, yeah. Unbelievable. Very, very interesting. I learned a lot from you today. This is right. fascinating. You explained it very clearly. We're out of time. All right. About 30 understand. seconds left. That was <laughs> terrific, you know. If you've got more information on things like this, you come back on? Oh, uh, absolutely, Doc. Thank you very much. Terrific. Joe, Joe Thanks Davino, you're the best. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> terrific, you know. Great. and. Uh, can you do that with teeth, the reverse mortgage? Sure, you take, sure. When you're dead, you can take the teeth? Why not? I heard they're doing grave diggers. They got all that good <laughs> stuff. <right? laughs> oh, boy. Interesting conversation. And uh, I learned a lot. And it was fascinating. And I hope you got some information about this. And to see if this is for you or not for you. But at least I gave you information today. That's the key here. Terrific. Well, we got to go right now. Dr. Pass is saying, see you again next time. And you know what? Whatever you do again, like this guy right here, Joe Davino. Be passionate. Otherwise, who cares? Put it there, Joe. Thanks, Doc. Great interesting. to see you. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Learned a lot.